Greetings, fellow adventurers. This is Vexus, and welcome to a Let's Play of Torrens Passage. Uh, this is a game that I've been meaning to do for a while now, and uh, is one of the uh, adventure games from the 90s that I'm probably most nostalgic about. Um, the designer of the game, uh, which was produced by Sierra, was a man named Al Lowe, who some of you uh, may recognize as the uh, mind behind the Leisure Suit Larry series. Um, however, unlike those games, which were obviously aimed at uh, a more adult audience um, and had a lot of sexual innu innuendo and humor in it, this one is much more geared towards a kind of family audience, um, perhaps even um, youngish children. So while there are still some uh, jokes and um, other moments of humor that uh, seem to be made for adults, they're not nearly so explicit or overt as Leisure Suit Larry. Um, and uh, the story itself is a pretty classic style fairy tale. Um, and you can see actually the world we're going to inhabit here for the game on your screen. This is the idea of the nested worlds and um, they use this concept to pretty good effect uh, in this game in order to keep the environments pretty varied. The interface is classic point and click and uh, I found both the uh, overall story uh, and especially the characters to be pretty enjoyable. So with all that out of the way let's get to the prologue and uh, I'll be quiet until it's over. Now, where is he? Darn, when are you gonna grow up? 
You pick up those tools from town like I told you? Um, I thought I'd do that tomorrow. No, I need them in the morning. You get into town right now. Yes, sir. Hurry home, Torrin. Don't be late for dinner. Okay, Mom. This isn't what I want in life. I should be a hero. Heroes don't run errands. Right, Boogle? Hey, Boogle. Boogle! Asleep again? Ah, oh, Boogle. Is this all my life will ever be? Running errands to this little town? I just... I just don't want to live my life without ever having lived my life. What happened? I saw it. I saw everything. Who are you? What are you doing here? I was just passing by when all that started. I was so scared I hid behind your barn. Who could have done this? It must have been one powerful sorcerer. Or... Sorceress. Why? And who around here has such power? No one I know. But once there was such a person. But no, Licentia's been gone for years. Licentia? Who's Licentia? Oh, I don't think it could possibly be her. She was banished to the lands below years ago. The lands below? She must have been evil to be sent there. Yes. And there's no way you could ever find her down there. I know what I'll do. I'll find this Licentia and force her to release my parents. I'm sure you will. All right. So, uh, as you can see, a pretty, uh, classic formula we have here for the story. Um, a uh, very ambitious uh, sorcerer or advisor, we're not quite sure yet, seems to have wanted to murder the royal family. And from the way that the story is presented, we already seem to know that Torin here was probably that uh, baby that got spirited away. And now uh, that same villain seems to have found where he is. But we don't know who this Licentia is, or why Torin's adoptive parents seem to have been kidnapped. Now, uh, the interface here um, has a lot of uh, pieces in it that might be somewhat familiar to people who play Sierra games. For example, you have the point counter here. So when every time we get items or we use items, we um, we'll get some points. And according to the mouse over here, we can get a maximum of 999. Uh, the book over here, I believe, has the recent dialogue, as you can see here. So if you miss something that was spoken, you can just read the script. Here is the hint button, if you need one. And in front of here is going to be our inventory space. Now, unlike uh, most uh, Sierra Adventure games, we actually have a duo of characters instead of just one. This is Boogle here. Um, faithful companion, rather dog-like, although you can see by both his color and his design that he's certainly not an actual dog, but some other strange creature. And it turns out that he is going to have um, a set of actions that we can have him do. So 
uh, and we'll see how those come in handy and how those manifest themselves. Now, after you do the prologue, it actually starts you here on the main screen, which if you have a little, um, if the game shows you a tab here, you can actually scroll across the entire screen here, which is kind of cool. And if there's one where you need to scroll up and down, then there'll be one here as well. But even though it starts you here, um, actually the first place that we should go to is back to the scene of the crime. So let's head off. Torrin's going to take his sweet time getting back. Okay. So, the adopted family's farm here. And it doesn't look like we can go into the barn, but we can grab this rope here. So there, we got our first point. And um, you can see that once you start to make some kind of progress, the um, hit button actually disables itself. And it won't be for a certain amount of time um, when this thing runs down that you'll be able to get another hint again. So it kind of forces you to pace yourself uh, on grabbing hints, um, which is kind of nice. Kind of prevents uh, kind of hint abuse, which would have been. Um, I had a fleaver for every time I've swung this. Which uh, would have been uh, much more useful in the days before everyone had internet access to look up hints, I guess. <laughs> so we picked up an axe right there, and uh, from the context, I assume that when he, uh, a pleber is whatever they use here for currency in this world. Now, unlike the barn, we can go into the hey, house. Hey, Google, let's go. If we look at Google here, we find out what his abilities are. You see that he looked at the crate here, and now we have a kind of box shape here. Google box is what it's called. Google is a shapeshifter. And so that's how we're going to use his abilities here on our adventure to rescue Torin's adoptive parents. I don't see anything up here that we can get. Looks like we can look at the chairs and the stove. That's where Dad always sat after dinner and drifted off to sleep. That was Mom's favorite chair. I hope she's okay. Now we get the impression that Torin really cared for his parents. Yep, the stove's still hot, all right. We also get the impression that Torin is perhaps not the most brightest bulb in the uh, in the room here. Uh, that looks like a, uh, a caterpillar, I guess. And he's really quick, so that we can't really click on him. The trick actually is just to click really fast. Hey, you! And it'll take about three times. Come back here. Come here, Inchy. Or four times. Gotcha. There we go. So we have... Whoops. It's called Inchy the Inchworm. Okay, it's an inchworm. It's not a caterpillar. Sounds like Torin uh, knows the inchworm pretty well since he already has a nickname for him, Inchi. I guess he lived in the sewing basket? I don't think there's anything else to get in here, so let's head out. You'll notice that sometimes um, Torin goes to a place he'll call for Boogle to jump into his bag, and other times he doesn't. Um, and sometimes there's actually a reason for it, um, that Torin is going to go somewhere where he wants to make sure Boogle goes with him. 
Other times it just seems random when he calls Boogle into his bag. I haven't. I don't think I ever quite figured out the uh, the rhyme or reason for all the, those times. But so we have the three items here, and that's all that we can get from the uh, Torin household. So let's head back to the first screen. Now you notice in the background, uh, not only do we have a nice little twilight sky with some stars, but you see that besides the mountains, we have these huge crystal formations. So keep that in mind, because those are actually a bit, big part of the story as we uh, move along here. These berries look ripe. Alright, we got berries. Always nice. And there's a path through here, so let's go ahead and take that. No matter how many times I see Crystal City, it's still impressive. <laughs> nice little meteor went by there. See the moon, and once again we see these huge crystal formations that actually look like, in, in this case, that they're forming the cores of the mountains. And here we have a village with a castle and a moat around it. So let's head over. Nothing on this side. There's no way I could get across that moat. Well, with the gate up, I agree. Let's see about the mode itself. The croctopus may well combine the worst characteristics of both animals, but its skin makes an excellent laptop computer case. <laughs> so, um, as another trademark here for Sierra Games is the death message. Um, However, unlike older Sierra games where the death message meant that you had to go and reload, all you need to do is click this button that says oops, and it'll take you back to the action uh, to a place just before you took the fatal action. And most of the time there'll be some kind of snarky comment here for the death message. So oftentimes I'll intentionally do the wrong thing and get Torin killed so that you guys can see what kind of message goes with it. Okay, so obviously we can't just go into the moat because there's weird hybrid animals called croctopuses. Um, and I'd like to remind you guys that this took place over ten years before Avatar The Last Airbender started with the whole hybrid animals. So, we, I, I saw those here first when I played this game. Let's see what we can do with this window here. Maybe this will get someone's attention. Halt! Who goes there? Torin of the Farman Valley. The bridge is up! Yes, I see, but I thought perhaps I would be able to convince you to, um... Oh. Uh, I guess not. Aw, oh, come on, Torin, you didn't even try. Let's try again. Hello! Halt! Oh, you are halted. Yes. Well, uh, would you mind moving a little? What? Why? You're throwing off my timing! Well, okay. <laughs> and he just leaves again. Halt! Who goes there? Me. You know it's me. You just told me to start walking. Well, okay. Halt! But now I am halted again. I halted when you first said halt. What? I didn't say halt. Did too. Did not. Did I? Oh. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Well. Never mind. Uh. Go away. Go away. I haven't asked for permission to enter yet. Go away anyway. But couldn't you? Uh, I guess not. <laughs> Ah, uh, this isn't getting us very far. Halt! Oh no, not again. Look, all I want to do is get inside. You can't! 
The bridge is up! Yes, I can see that. I thought perhaps you could... Hello? Well, I guess you can't. Halt! <laughs> oh, how many times are we gonna do this? How many times are you gonna toss those pebbles up here? Look, I need information about Licentia, about the lands below. Can you help me? Lands below? You don't want to know about that place. And as to Licentia? I've never heard of that place. She's not a place. She's a sorceress. I must find her. Well, I guarantee you she is not here. Now go away. You are interrupting my nap time. Oh, brother, you're no help. Nor shall I be. Good night. Hello? I cannot hear you. I'm asleep. How could you be? You're talking. No, I'm not. I'm asleep. You are not. Not to. Are not. To. I give up. Besides, if a sorceress is anywhere, she's not in Crystal City. Alright, so that <laughs> scene there pretty much sums up the entire feel for the game. Um, not only are, can we not enter Crystal City, but I can tell you that we're never going to go there. It's just something they put in for this uh, <laughs> kind of confrontation with the guard. I think it's uh, this is the first kind of parody uh, of, of or, uh, or satire that we're going to see in the game on kind of the classic adventure uh, uh, trope. In that you know, there's usually some city that you need to go to, to to talk to people for information, and here we can't get in, and we never will. Now it doesn't mean that we're done with the screen, but we'll have to come back here at a later time to do something. And uh, you can't. Uh, get any more dialogues. That's the last one. Uh, with the guard. So, oh well. So much for the big impressive Crystal City. So let's head this way. We saw that there was some stuff here at the bottom of the tree and looked like some kind of insects or worms and they just shot right up as soon as we went past them. Let's see what's in here. Ah, yes. Okay. Got... Looks like a bunch of leaves here. Why am I taking a leaf? Good question. Why am I taking a leaf? <laughs> okay, well, we could grab the leaves if we wanted to, but... Torin is questioning why we need one. Again, which is a question that I find myself asking in many adventure games. And if we just don't, don't click anything, he'll actually just keep on going. That's actually what this arrow here will often do. Um, but I'm going to take a look at each screen here separately. You saw um, actually a showcase here of one of the things that Torin is actually really good at, which is acrobatics. He is a very uh, agile person. Let's see what happens if we go this way. Oh, it looks like some kind of swamp. Let's see if we go out here. A peat pod, huh? But it's obviously too soft to walk on. Is it really too soft to walk on? Aww. I want to walk on the peat bog. Let's see if we can get up here. That's a pretty large bog, actually. It goes, stretches all the way off into the distance there. <laughs> Thanks, Google. 
From out of the bushes, tiny scorecards appear. Five, nine, five, nine, six, oh, five, eight, and a three, five. Huh. Looks like the Eastern European rabbit is judging again. And a little humor from Cold War era Olympics. But, uh, okay, so Torin wonders at the logic of us wanting him to pick up a leaf, but as soon as we say dive into the peat bog, he says okay and goes for it. <laughs> oh, whatever. So the peat bog seems to be something impassable and something that's not going to help us if we just dive into it. some interesting looking plants. Whoa! These spines are razor sharp. I'd better be careful. You also, uh, you might have heard a strange kind of swishing sound. Um, that will happen whenever uh, Torin actually walks um, on top of Google, who will actually literally walk on him. Like that. <laughs> so, it seems that Boogle is pretty impervious to uh, pain and damage here. Which is quite useful for a companion of an adventurer, I think. Here we have a very root-filled tree. And this one we can examine. If you want a square meal, this looks like the root. And that's certainly not the... Uh, only bad pun we're going to run into in the game. Okay, we see a few more crystals sticking up here, and it looks like some kind of structure next to a very sheer cliff wall. pretty forlorn or abandoned place. And uh, you kind of notice it looks like it's two very different structures. We have these kind of more uh, ancient and eloquently designed kind of domes, and then the front of it looks like more of a utilitarian shack or small dwelling. In case of emergency, break glass. What could that mean? Hmm. Let's try the door here. Hello? Anybody home? Huh. Guess not. The bridge is up! No, wait. We already did that. Okay, so actually your hint is right here. In case of emergency, break glass. Um... It's a little bit obtuse, since these actually look more like crystal than glass, but basically we need to try to break this, and the best tool we have on hand is our axe. Ah, nice blue color, eh, Boogle? Yeah, oh, what's that? Uh, you rang? Who are you? Where'd you come from? What are you doing there? You trying to sneak by me? Oh, I wasn't asleep, no sir. I heard you come through. Well, I wasn't trying to sneak by you. I'm Torin, and I really need to get to the lands below. Can you help me? The lands below? You one of them? Well, you can't stay up here. You go right back down where you came from. Yep, nobody from down there gets past me, and you won't neither. Oh, no, you misunderstand. I'm not from the lands below. I want to go there. So, you do know how to get there? Go there? Why, no one goes there. That's no place for any self-respecting citizen. Why, them worlds is filled with nutsos, malcontents, psychos, politicians. Hmm. <laughs> 
No, there's no way I'd let you go down there. So you do know. Oh, please help me, sir. I must get to the lands below. May I come inside? Nope. No way. Nobody gets inside this guardhouse except my replacement. Don't know where he is either. Was supposed to be here ten, maybe twelve years ago. Never been this late before. No, you gotta go. Get out of here and don't come back. Hmm. So, he was waiting for a replacement. Let's see if Torin comes up with some ideas on how to work with that. Halt! Who goes there? Um, it's me. I'm... <clears throat> I'm your replacement. What? You are? Finally, it's about time. You must be ten years late. Where have you been? Uh... Heavy traffic. Huh? Well, whatever. <laughs> Hurry up and get inside here. I am powerful hungry. Uh, okay. Hmm. Can't say I much care for the new uniforms. <laughs>